This is a video of our trip from Saginaw, Dominican Republic to St. Martin. The first leg of our trip is crossing the Mona Passage to Mayaguez, Puerto Rico. Here we are leaving Saginaw Bay with our buddy boats, Wind Machine and Temerity. We follow the coastline down the Dominican Republic just north of Punta Cana and then head out towards Mayaguez, Puerto Rico. We're going to jump on to Ben and Abby's boat and watch their video that they took of the crossing. This was going to be a 27 hour trip. It was a long night but we had a great sunset. It rains every day here in Mayaguez, Puerto Rico around 3 o'clock and when you know it, that's when we arrive. Our first stop after Mayaguez was Puerto Real, just in time to see some house cleaning. We also got our fuel polished here because we were having some more problems with the engine stalling. But as we got the fuel polished, we found out it was really clean and the tank was clean. So I still don't know what our problem was, why the engine would not start. Sailing around Puerto Rico is very difficult. Because of the east wind and waves, you have to start at 4.30 in the morning and get off the water between 9 and 10 a.m. So it only gives you about three hours of sailing every day. This was a great stop for stocking up on food, liquor, and do some laundry. I also ordered a new water maker. It had to be shipped in from Fort Lauderdale. After it arrived, I realized I have to get some extra parts. So that was a trip to San Juan.
day before we were going to leave Salinas, our buddy boat, Let It Be, showed up. So we stayed one more day, and then we were on our way to Palmas del Mar at the east end of Puerto Rico, and that's where they were going to keep their boat. This is one of the things you can do while sitting at a bar and enjoying a beer. This is Sargassium seagrass. After it sits in the heat all day, it does begin to smell. It causes a lot of problems for a marina.
Frank and Mary Grace on Let It Be decided they were going to stay here at Palmas Del Mar for a while, so it was time to move on. Our next stop was the Spanish Virgin Islands, Calibra, and then on off to the U.S. Virgin Islands, Red Hook Bay. There wasn't much to do in Calibra and also not much to do in the U.S. Virgin Islands. So we only stayed two days in each island and then moved on to the British Virgin Islands.
We left the British Virgin Islands about 6.30 in the morning and arrived in St. Martin about 5.30 in the morning. St. Martin is the French side of the island. And here are the sights that we saw early in the morning. Here we are entering the lagoon, entering Simpson Bay Lagoon. We're going to head over to the Dutch side of the island, St. Martin. We're going to anchor right next to the Witch's Tit. decided to stay here in St. Martin for quite a while so there was lots of work to do. I started to install the water maker and Lori started to do some staining. Here you can see I've taken off the water pump. The bearings are shot so I had to call over to the states to order a new one. So now it was going to take a few weeks for the new water pump to arrive. Now we're starting to watch the weather very closely. We said that we see that there's a hurricane that's starting to form out into the ocean called Irma. Okay, the last uh, two days we've been pre preparing the boat, three days preparing the boat for Hurricane Irma. And uh, um, it's been very difficult because of the heat. Um, um, sa Saturday, we brought down the sails. Um, we got to, into the marina early, but we had to wait until 4 o'clock and until it cooled down to bring the sails down. It was just too hot. Um, Sunday, uh, we got mostly everything done early in the morning. We took down the Dodger and Bimini and the solar panels. And uh, 
on Monday um, when the store opened I went in bought uh, ropes chains chafe guard all kinds of stuff I'll show you how it works um, let's see if I can do this uh, okay it's a little bit of an angle here's the chain that you use these will go around the pylons up front and I'll show you that in a minute and I had to buy fire hose and you take the chain and put it down the fire hose and you take the chain and put it around the pylon and the fire hose prevents uh, the lines that you tie to the chain from chafing and here's the chafing material uh, that you put on the lines to go around the chains now these chains are the big ones and they'll go around the pylons and uh, the, the trick of that is to uh, take your lines to the pylon and then drop the chain the chain will go down and then you've got some low low support so you've got a, a line that goes low and then you got a high one that stays up uh, on top of a cleat and I'll show you that and I'll and I'll show you what we're doing uh, what we've been doing it's uh, Sunday at about four o'clock today uh, we're far from being done uh, but we've got to be done by by Tuesday noon because this thing uh, it's gonna you never know what time it's gonna come uh, Tuesday night early Mon or Wednesday morning so I'll show you around what we've done the wheel is off I've taken the wheel off and it'll stay in the cockpit because it doesn't fit in the boat and uh, here's the dinghy um, we got to use the dinghy to get off the boat right now but uh, when I'm finished uh, I'm gonna put the motor in the cockpit uh, the fuel tank and then I'll get off the boat and pull the plug on the dinghy and let it sink right there um, if it's full of water it won't blow around and so you can see I've tied off I got two lines there I got two lines in the back and I've got two lines going there and here we go I'll take it to the side of the boat so there's a different look at the side of the boat back and there's the front and I'll take you up to the front all these uh, carry cans have to go in the cockpit um, I don't know if you can see it and there's the line that goes to the pylon that goes to the chain that's going down the boat. and there's the line that stays up high um, I've got that on both sides you can see I've got the black black line there runs up to the pylon and it stays down low with the chain um, and then a high high line and I've got two anchors out uh, and one line to the pylon in front of me so a little bit of a spider effect and uh, I still have things on the deck uh, the long stuff, my spinnaker pole, and uh, uh, I've got uh, the batten down here. It's uh, long. That's going to go inside all the poles. All this rope, this rope here, it's a 100-foot rope. I'm going to tie it somewhere to the front of the boat, and I'm going to go over to that dock right there. And there's a cleat over there. And tie up that. Tie up to there give me some extra support and uh, so looking over here at the hills this is the north east part of the island so we'll be protected there unless the eye is right over us um, they say the wind will whip down this island down the uh, down the um, the hills pretty quick and after the hurricane passes uh, then this is the problem over here um, You can see the hills way down there. That's the other side of the lagoon now That's only two miles away and they say that there's going to be a surge maybe four feet But there's possibly could be ten foot waves um, The only thing I'm concerned about are these small boats over here coming off uh, the dock and crashing towards us um, I've got these two boats and the end of the pier to protect me uh, from the high waves um, so 
and then if it comes from the south, uh, we're a little protected over there. And um, everybody's nervous. Uh, this is a big one. This is uh, category four. And uh, I don't think they've had a category four here before. Uh, I know for sure they've had a two. And uh, so four is pretty serious. Everybody's everybody's uh, worried about this one. Um, we're going to. Uh, go into the marine store and uh, stay there uh, with uh, six other people and um, play cards, wait for the storm to end and then come out and we'll see what's left and all we can do is hope that uh, our boat's still here with no damage. Um, so that's about all for now and we'll report in uh, during the storm if we've got communication and uh, after the storm if we've got communication. So, bye from St. Martin and we hope to see you in a couple days. The manager of the marina told us that we weren't allowed to stay in the building overnight because it wasn't rated for a category 5 hurricane. So she took us home and we stayed there for two nights. Here's a quick look around of what it looks like before the hurricane. The hurricane arrived about 4.30 the next morning. the dogs for leaves left in the trees, no branches hardly. Wow. Okay, 
Let's look on the other side here. Wow, look at all of that over there. Yeah, it's not as green as it used to be. much damage. I didn't think it was going to be this bad. The boats that were beside me are gone. There's the one boat over there. The other one's flipped over floating. Monarchy is damaged too much. that used to be over there are gone. This boat here was over there. And it came over and hit this guy. Wow. Big beautiful boat. And we thought this guy was crazy. Using his dinghy here and it's the only one that This is what it looks like right next door to Mahi Beach. Mahi Beach is where people stand on the beach area and they stick up their hand and almost touch the planes that land. Now you can see there's no beach left, all washed out into the sea. This is the hotel we were staying at. The managers at the hotel went over to the restaurant next door and broke into their freezer and took all the food they can get and this is what we did we set up a barbecue in the parking lot and we had food for about four days and um, after that they started to ration Here are some pictures from around the hotel. Some of the rooms were destroyed. Furniture everywhere. You wouldn't want to be in, in these rooms. Here's some pictures we took walking past the airport. Here we are at the airport on our fifth day trying to get off the island. It was a very hot day at the airport.
CCTV's Janice Golding is live inside Pearson's Terminal 3 with just an incredible story, Janice, of a retired Canadian couple who had been sailing the Caribbean. I call them. This couple is very lucky to be alive. Their boat broke down just outside St. Martin, and they could not leave the island as the hurricane came bearing down on them. And they say, if not for the kindness of a stranger, they might not be here to tell their story. Good to see you, man. It was a very happy reunion at Pearson today as Ken Reynolds and Laurie McCoy landed safely in Toronto after nearly losing their lives in Hurricane Irma. <laughs> forget the sounds it was just like a train your ears pop um, you can't even hear yourself talk it's so loud and the walls shake like an earthquake Reynolds and McCoy were halfway through a three-year Caribbean retirement trip aboard their vessel the Mauna Kea when it broke down they stopped in St. Martin for a part and that's when Irma hit and you just want it to be over and it didn't end for 12 hours the couple had hoped to take shelter from the storm at the marina, but when they learned Irma was a Category 5, they were told it wasn't safe, and then a good Samaritan offered them shelter in her home. She saved our lives, I think, because uh, we we had nowhere to go. I mean, people stayed on their boats because that was their home. They were living on their boats, and some of them died. They found bodies in the lagoon. St. Martin had been ravaged, there was very little information coming from the Canadian government, and chaos reigned at the airport. They were running out of water to give people, and the water was as hot as coffee. After returning to the airport four times, the couple managed to get a flight to Puerto Rico, and then they flew to Houston, eventually landing in Toronto this morning. Uh, I didn't want to come home this way. I wanted to come home on my boat, but I'm happy. I just happy to touch the ground after what we've seen, and I feel so bad for those people. Mm -hmm beautiful island and beautiful people and they've got nothing left the couple has lost their boat their possessions and have precious little to call their own anymore still they have their lives they're together and they have a chance to build anew something for which they say they are extremely grateful Reynolds and McCoy are currently staying with a childhood friend in Fenelon Falls. They say they're trying to figure out what they're going to do next. They don't want to give up on their retirement dream, but they say they're not sure if they'll ever go back sailing. We're going live from Janice Golding. Now back to Andrea. Finally, we're back home in Canada. Now it's time to think about what we're going to do next.